This installation video provides a visual guidance for the installation of a low threshold three-piece shower. Please refer to the installation manual for specific details relating to the installation of your shower. Now is the time to dry assemble your modular shower prior to moving into the bathroom space. This procedure can be performed on any clean, dry, and open space. Now, this is an important step for ensuring that you have received the correct panels, you've received the correct drain location, the panels and pan are free from damage and defect, and the panels align properly when assembled prior to installing in the framing pocket. Take a picture of the unit now. The purpose and benefit will be covered in a later step. The note, it is a wise choice to delay demolition of the existing bathtub area until you're confident that your new unit is the correct size, hand, and condition. You will not want your customer to be without a working bathroom while waiting for a replacement. Remember, slow is fast. The following is a list of the required tools. The following is a list of the materials needed. Check the framing pocket to ensure it is sized properly with the dimensions provided on the framing diagrams page in your installation instructions. Next, check the pocket for square, plumb, and level and make the necessary adjustments. Note, it is more common than not that adjustments will need to be made. Start by hanging a plumb bob from the framing beginning at the back wall. This is critical to your installation. In this demonstration, the wall was not plumb. A solution is to either shim the pan away from the wall or notch the stud. Now, this is critical to a proper installation of the back wall panels. Slight variances will affect plumb walls and uneven grout lines. Inspect the subfloor for level and structural integrity. A solid, non-flexing subfloor is required. Strengthen and replace any weak or damaged subfloor materials. Dry fit your shower base to ensure it fits in the frame properly. Ensure pocket is clean from all debris. Pre-position three short lengths of half-inch PVC plastic pipe as slider rails or shoehorns in the framing pocket. Lower the shower base at a 45 degree angle onto the PVC pipe as shown. This will assist greatly on sliding the base into the framing pocket. Depending on your room configuration and clearances, it may be necessary to cut additional drywall to provide enough clearance to install the pan. Level the base temporarily, ensuring the bubble is perfectly centered. Like the foundation to a home, this is vital to the walls installing properly, resulting in consistent grout lines. Fasten the base to one stud on the center of the back wall with one screw. Remember, you may need to shim the base out away from the stud to ensure the walls can be installed properly. Once level, draw a line on the subfloor indicating the front point of the threshold. This will provide a visual cue for a later step when permanently installing the base. Remove temporary screw and pull the shower base back out of the framing pocket. Now it is time to install the drain body. Remove the inside neoprene gasket and compression ring from the drain and set aside for a later step. Install the 2 inch no caulk shower drain body on the pan with plumber's putty. Tighten the nut until snug and excess putty squeezes out around the flange. Remove excess. Prepare drain to meet local plumbing codes. The details for the drain core area can be found in the instructions on the framing diagrams page. Stub out and extend the drain pipe two to four inches above the floor. This will be trimmed at a later step. The base is manufactured with a built-in back leg support. During the dry fit procedure, you'll notice the base does not sit level naturally. The support leg is cut short to provide adjustment for unlevel floors. 
Proper installation requires solid contact between the bottom of the support leg and the subfloor as your warranty depends on it. First, measure the distance from the front apron to the center of the back leg. Now, transfer that measurement from the previously marked line on the floor and using a straight edge mark line on the floor for the back leg. Next, using approximately one tube of 100% clear silicone adhesive, apply every two inches on your line as shown. The adhesive should be applied at a height that ensures contact with the base as it's set in place, which means each bead of silicone should be at least one inch or greater. And once the adhesive has cured, this will provide proper support and adhesion between the pan and the subfloor. With the base ready to install permanently, position and line up the drain over the drain pipe. Slowly lower the base to level, nudging in small movements until the base meets the line drawn on the floor from an earlier step. Check for level. Resecure the center screw to the stud wall. Note, leaning into the shower can easily nudge your base out of level. It is recommended to secure one screw into each wall rechecking level as you go. The level base is crucial to wall assembly. Secure the pan to all available studs, shimming where necessary, countersinking number 8 stainless steel screws. This allows the screw head to be flush with the finished flange so as to not interfere with the finished wall installation. Cut the drain pipe even with the top of the rubber gasket using an inside pipe cutting tool. Using plumber's grease, lubricate the inside of the rubber gasket and slide over the drain pipe with beveled edge facing up. Push down until it sets itself. Then, screw compression ring into place until tight. Then snap the grid drain into place. Place protection on the floor to prevent scratches and dings to the finish while completing the assembly process. The protection can be cut from the cardboard packaging as the example shown here. It is now safe to step into the shower for the next steps. Now it's time to install the wall opposite the valve. Your shower features a pin and slot system that enables you to install all panels from the front finish side without requiring rear access. Begin by using the 100% silicone adhesive, applying to the base ledge as shown, encircling the single pin and any shipping bolt holes on the ledge. Lift wall panel into place, guiding the wall over the alignment pin. Check alignment of the tile grout line and before screwing flange to studs, inspect the gap seams in the corners and on the base. The gaps should match the picture taken in the dry fit procedure. If there is a larger gap, this means the base is not level or the back wall is not square and plumb. Now is the time to correct. Secure wall to studs with screws, shimming where necessary to ensure wall surfaces are flush. Before installing the valve wall, we must first install the valve. Refer to the valve manufacturer's instructions for conventional sweat installations. For this demonstration, we'll be installing a valve with PEX connections. First, find the desired location of your valve and apply protective masking tape over the area to be cut. Mark the center of your valve and drill a hole in the diameter listed in your valve instructions. Mount the valve directly to the panel by connecting the front trim plate to the valve body using the mounting screws provided by the valve manufacturer. Next, mount the supply outlet to the shark bite eared elbow. Note, if your existing shower supply is higher than the new shower wall panel, leave in place and then connect to your new valve. The framing cove has been prepared to receive PEX pipe in the looped pattern to prevent kinking and allow ease of connection from the valve to the water supplies. Using the 100% silicone, apply to all interior seams. Rest the panel on a bucket as shown during water connection to avoid chipping the panel or the pan. Connect the hot and cold water PEX supply lines using PEX crimps or shark bite push on fittings. Notice the installers are using 90 degree fittings which work best in this application. And while the wall was resting on the bucket and fully connected, now is the time to turn the water back on and test for leaks.
Install panel by starting at the center seam, rotating the wall into place. Check alignment of the tile grout line, then secure wall to studs with screws shimming where necessary to ensure wall surfaces are flush. Your shower is fully reinforced and ready to receive surface mount accessories now or anytime in the future. It is highly recommended that the client be involved in identifying the ideal placement of accessories according to their needs. Always mark, drill, and caulk in a circular pattern around pilot holes for all accessories. The unit is designed to allow a 1 8 inch gap at the seams. Caulk all seams as well as the front edge of the threshold. Now do not use your shower until caulk is cured. See caulk instructions for cure time. A premium caulk is recommended. For fast two-day installations, a 3-inch white flange trim molding kit is an available option that transitions the drywall to the shower covering the gap. During the removal of your existing tub or shower, it's recommended that you cut the wall board away approximately one inch beyond the perimeter or outside edge of the nailing flange of your shower unit. This step will minimize the amount of drywall patching required. Congratulations! You've successfully installed your low threshold shower providing years of safety and independence.